Hello and welcome to the Ice Guy, brought to you by the National Hockey Now Network. This is the show that takes you into the world of the National Hockey League. Every game, every day, from a betting perspective. With pro sports handicappers, Ian Cameron, Alex B. Smith, and various guests from the world of hockey and sports betting. And now, here's your host, Ian Cameron. Welcome to the Ice Guys, presented by National Hockey Now. Tuesday, November 15th, Ian Cameron is with you, flying solo today in the captain's chair. Uh, Alex B. Smith, uh, an appointment this afternoon. He'll be back, uh, I believe, tomorrow and Thursday as well, uh, rejoining the show. So just me today, and I actually cherish cherish these solo shows because, especially at this time of year, it's very hectic, very busy. Uh, it just, it's, it's, you're basically, put for me at least, putting in, 12, 14 hour days in a lot of instances. And so you get the chance to just do a solo show, fly through the card a little bit faster. Uh, you always enjoy that opportunity. And we have a good card on tap here on this Tuesday night, as usual, uh, nine games uh, to break down here on today's show. And uh, we will get to that in just a second. Let's briefly uh, look back on last night, which was actually a pretty decent night overall. You know, Ottawa fell short against the Islanders. That didn't go my way, but a lot of things did. I ended up jumping on uh, Calgary in regulation uh, and the over against L.A. Uh, closer to puck drop when I saw what the lineups were. That came through. Uh, fell short with the over in the Blues-Avs game, but the best bet. We like this spot. We like this price with the St. Louis Blues last night, plus 170 uh, against the Colorado Avalanche, a team with a little bit of momentum. Had won two games in a row following that. Uh, awful losing streak where it looked like the Blues were never going to win a game uh, again. And sure enough, they snapped the streak last week at home against San Jose. They carried that momentum forward with a terrific victory against Vegas uh, over the weekend on Saturday night. Uh, and certainly uh, last night against Colorado, another formidable foe. Um, they got the job done. And man, what a unbelievable hold on to your uh, hold on to your hat type of ending that was for the St. Louis Blues. I mean, uh, five on three power play for the Colorado Avalanche. I mean, they already they took a penalty. Falk did with about two minutes to go. Then Pavel Buchnevich puts the puck over the glass, delay a game, uh, and it ends up being a five on three power play for Colorado. And then they pull the goalie and everything but score. Uh, the Colorado Avalanche did, but incredible work, blocking shots, sticks in the passing lanes, sticks in the shooting lanes, Defended extremely well by the Blues. Made it difficult for Colorado to execute a clean play uh, in the offensive zone uh, with that extended five-on-three opportunity. Jordan Bennington came up with a few big saves as well. Uh, and the St. Louis Blues were able to hang on, and I mean hang on, 3-2 uh, to two last night to beat the uh, Colorado Avalanche. So good to see uh, the big dog as the best bet come, come through for us last night uh, with the uh, St. Louis Blues. Uh, and my favorite goal scorer prop of the night, at plus 500, plus 525 was even out there on it. Adam Ruzicka, we mentioned it yesterday. He's playing on the top line with Toffoli and with Lindholm. And that line was awesome last night in the Calgary victory against L.A. And he scored in the game against the Jets uh, on Saturday night, the game that snapped Calgary's losing streak. And to me, it was an insane price. Absolutely uh, ridiculous, uh, in honesty. And I, I, look, I would have said it was ridiculous if he didn't score last night. Because you can't price a guy that's playing on the top line right now uh, for the Calgary Flames, for any team really, uh, at plus 500, plus 525. You can't do it. You know, especially when you see Lind, and we mentioned this on the show yesterday, Lindholm and Toffoli, you know what their price was to score a goal? Like plus 240. You know, you, you just cannot have that. You know, and that's uh, odds makers and, uh, and people that price these goal score props will be asleep at the wheel repeatedly in these situations throughout the season when a player is moving up the lineup they will never be priced the way they should because look it's hockey they don't know the ins and outs and the nuances of these teams and the lineup shuffling that goes on game to game throughout the course of a long season and that's where you pounce and that's where you take advantage of it and we were able to do that last night with uh Ruzicka getting hit on the board for the uh, Flames in a game where look they had been struggling to score goals the crux of their issue during the losing streak but boy they certainly uh, had an outburst and an explosion last night as Calgary's now won two in a row and funny how that works right seven game losing streak can't find ways to win snake bit no offense, and then all of a sudden you get a win, some confidence against Winnipeg, and all of a sudden you add to it with another nice victory last night 
uh, against the LA Kings. Anyway, that was last night. We have to turn the page to today because it is a big card. Let us get it rocking and rolling and start with the Washington Capitals taking on the Florida Panthers. We've got Florida minus 190 home favorites here, six, six and a half being the total uh, in this game. Uh, the theme for the Capitals repeatedly uh, when we've talked about them on the show in recent games, recent weeks has been the injury situation. I mean, they are absolutely ravaged, decimated, uh, you know, whatever word you want to use and put to it. Uh, that's the situation right now with the uh, Capitals. I mean, it is a shorthanded hockey team, uh, many key pieces out. Uh, and it seems to be, you know, at the point now where it's actually maybe getting a little bit worse, not better, other than John Carlson coming back. Uh, that was uh, obviously a great sight for the Capitals that they got him back for the two games uh, against Tampa Bay uh, over the weekend. But even with John Carlson's return on the blue line, you still have, uh, obviously, uh, Tom Wilson hasn't played yet this year. Backstrom hasn't played yet this year. Connor Brown's still out. Carl Hagelin's still out. Dmitry Orlov, who I think is your best stay-at-home shutdown defenseman, uh, is still out as well for Washington. And now you add Nicholas Obey kubel to the mix. Uh, he is out due to a three-game suspension for that ugly incident against Cal Foote uh, of the Tampa Bay Lightning, which took place uh, on uh, Friday night in the first of the games against the uh, uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, and that's what got that whole ruckus going uh, during that game, and a little bit of uh, nasties, a little bit of a uh, you know, a little uh, scrums after the whistle. I mean, it was definitely a lot of uh, uh, ill will uh, between the two teams, especially in the game that took place on uh, Friday night. So, you look at this matchup, Washington uh, obviously has struggled to win games uh, with all the injuries, with the shorthanded team that they've had. Uh, just two and six uh, in their last eight games. It's not really that shocking. And, you know, we've also talked about how this team without TJ Oshie last year, their win-loss record was not very good without him. And it's basically been kind of that same thing this year, where that win-loss record with him out of the lineup has just not been very good. Uh, and it's definitely someone they miss in this lineup. Florida is off a 4-2 to two loss to Edmonton. That was a winner for me Saturday. Uh, the Oilers is a big underdog there, plus uh, they were probably plus 155, I believe, the price I got there with the Oilers uh, in that 4-2 to two win on Saturday. It was just a great performance from Skinner uh, in net for the Oilers. Stuart Skinner was just absolutely brilliant. And if not for Skinner in the first period doing what he did, it could have been 3 nothing Florida because Panthers were just all over the Oiler net uh, early in that game but just, just could not capitalize on it. Then as the game settled in, Edmonton got to their game, started to play a little bit more. Uh, in the offensive zone, started controlling the puck a lot more uh, as the game went on and, and ended up getting uh, the victory uh, in the end 4-2. to two. So Florida off the loss, looking to bounce back here uh, in this game here. You look at series history, Florida's won three straight. Florida's won four of the last five uh, against Washington, but they've been tight games, uh, a lot of them. Uh, two have went to overtime uh, in the last three. Uh, I don't have uh, – Alex B. Smith did not send me his card today, so I don't know yet what he's on. But if he does uh, send it, I will post it on the Patreon page later this afternoon. But this does, definitely feels like an Alex B. special here, maybe looking at the uh, draw uh, in this game with the Capitals and Panthers. I'm kind of looking at Florida in regulation here a little bit uh, in this game. I don't love the price necessarily uh, when it's all said and done. Um, and I don't like the Bobrovsky starting. That I don't like. And I actually like the over now that Bobrovsky goalie Bob has been confirmed in net. Now, you could counter that and say, you know what? Spencer Knight's been the better goalie lately. He's There's a reason why Paul Maurice has started him multiple games in a row. This is a spot where you would assume that uh, goalie Bob is really going to want to play well. And because he knows he could be losing the starting job. He could be losing his spot uh, as the number one goaltender here for the Florida Panthers. But... At the end of the day, motivation's great. Chip on your shoulders, great. That's all fine and dandy. Uh, but at the end of the day, you got to be able to stop pucks. You got to be able to play well. And to be honest with you, that has been always an issue with Bobrovsky. You know, consistency. I mean, his record this year: three and four, three point two eight goals against average, eight ninety seven save percentage uh, for goalie Bob. He's going to have to be flat out better. Period. And here's an opportunity for him you know, to uh, show what he can do. But at, at the same point in time, we haven't seen enough of it uh, from uh, him in terms of consistency. And certainly this year's numbers are below average, below NHL average for goaltenders. There's no denying that uh, whatsoever. So, yeah, you could say he's fired up to uh, make, uh, get a start, start get an opportunity, uh, capitalize on the fact that the Panthers finally lost a game 
uh, with Spencer Knight in net, which to be honest with you, it wasn't even Spencer Knight's fault. You know, I don't think he could have faulted him for many of the goals uh, that he gave up against Edmonton, but it's an opportunity. We'll see if he takes advantage of it. But you look at this uh, series history, like I said, it's three of the last four have gone over the total. It's probably uh, a s- situation where the goaltending is a little bit weaker now for Florida with Bobrovsky and net. As far as Washington goes, we should see Darcy Kemper uh, in between the pipes for this game. Total is at six in a couple of books. Now it's six and a half in some spots, but there's a six at bet online. There's a six at DraftKings right now uh, with the uh, total in this game. And certainly if you get a six, I really like the over. If you can find that number, you have the security blanket, if you will, of a four to two uh, or five to one final score. Uh, if you can find that six uh, with the over here uh, in this game. But yeah, that's what I like here. Washington, Florida over the total. Certainly series history dictates that when these two teams meet, uh, they've gotten involved in some higher scoring hockey. In fact, the last 10 meetings, seven and three uh, to the over with uh, Washington head to head against Florida. So uh, that's what I'm going to look at here is Washington, Florida uh, over the total uh, Capitals and Panthers tonight. As far as the uh, prop situation goes, Sonny Milano, Sonny. Yesterday, my life was filled with rain. Hopefully, it's filled with money tonight. Backing Sonny Milano to score a goal. So, uh, and they've uh, given him top line responsibility tonight, Peter LaViolette. He looks like he will be on the number one line with Evgeny Kuznetsov, Birdman, as I like to call him, and Alex uh, Ovechkin uh, for the uh, Capitals tonight. And look, he's had opportunities. Remember, there was a game last week he, sh- he was going to score, but. Uh, they reviewed it. It was no goal. It never crossed the goal line, but he hit the post. Uh, and then, of course, he scored over the weekend. So uh, no question about it. He is the undervalued player prop, goal score prop player on this Caps team right now. Uh, no question about that. Uh, Connor Sheary as well. I wouldn't mind to look toward him for a goal score prop tonight uh, as well. He's playing on the second line. Uh, we saw him uh, get on the uh, score sheet uh, over the weekend against Tampa in both games. Back-to-back games with a goal against Tampa Bay. Uh, for Connor Sheary uh, over the weekend. So I think that's a good player prop to uh, look at. Uh, On the Florida side of things, uh, of course, they're off a loss. So Paul Maurice is uh, shaking things up just a little bit. Uh, Anton Lindell's moving up to the uh, second line center spot. So that's a change that where you could all of a sudden see a little bit of value now on him. He's not necessarily known as a score, more of a playmaker. But nevertheless, he's moving up to the uh, second line center spot tonight for the Florida Panthers might be able to look in his direction as far as goal score prop goes for the Panthers tonight uh, in this game. Uh, It's interesting because I keep going back to uh, uh, him and uh, Nick Cousins as well, by the way. I want to point him out. He's only on the fourth line, but he's had five shots on goal the last two games. He scored against Carolina last week. Nick Cousins might be uh, someone that you consider here for goal prop. And keep in mind, he just returned to the lineup after being scratched. So you're talking about a player that wants to prove a point that he belongs in the lineup regularly. And then Cool Mint Lusterinen, E2, Cool Mint Lusterinen. I keep talking about this guy because he's got six, two, two shots on goal. He's he's getting a shot on goal, at least one in every game, pretty much. Uh, He hit the post in one of the games against uh, the game against Edmonton on Saturday. Uh, Great value there for a guy that even though he's on the third line, uh, he is getting uh, chances for the uh, Florida Panthers. So uh, there's some prop options for you uh, as well in that game. Dallas and Tampa Bay now next up. Uh, Lightning minus 130, uh, home favorite, six the total uh, in this one. I'm probably not going to end up on this game side or total. Um, Dallas certainly, I think there's a, my numbers show a little value on Dallas here uh, at a plus 110, but I don't know if I'm going to end up backing them because you got Tampa Bay, uh, 6 3 win against uh, Washington. Uh, in this game. And when you look at the uh, Dallas Stars uh, situation here, uh, to me, they played better than Tampa Bay throughout the course of the season. It is Brian Elliott uh, in net for the uh, Lightning. Another reason why I would lean a little to Dallas. But before we throw Brian Elliott in the uh, trash bin, uh, if you will, because we just automatically, we think of him as so substandard compared to Andre Vasilevsky. First of all, Vasilevsky hasn't been at his best this year. I've talked about that multiple times. And second of all, Brian Elliott is three and one. Tampa Bay three and one with Brian Elliott in net uh, this season. So even though his numbers are not the greatest, 3.26 goals against uh, 895 save percentage, you know, they have won three of his four starts this year. So uh, that is something you want to keep in mind. But uh, I still think, you know, with those numbers, 
3.26 goals against 895 save percentage. You know, it tells me that Tampa Bay has outscored uh, their issues uh, in these games that Elliott's been in net. Will that continue uh, for a long period of time? Uh, that remains to be seen. But you look at the uh, a goal saved above average, always the uh, more accurate statistic, if you will, to measure goaltenders. Brian Elliott's minus 1.03 goals saved above average this year, which is definitely below NHL average. So yeah, he's got that three and one record, but um, you know, it's, it, it's a situation where that goal saved above average tells you that he probably could still play a little bit better. And Tampa Bay has given him the uh, offense, you know, to be able to have success. This could be an over actually, believe it or not. Tampa Bay is trending that way. Five of the last seven games for Tampa have gone over the total five, one and one. Tampa Bay over the total uh, in their last seven games. And same with Dallas, 5-0-2, five, uh, five, oh five overs, two pushes for the Dallas Stars uh, in terms of to the over in their last seven games. So actually has me going in the direction of maybe looking over this total, which you wouldn't always expect with the uh, Dallas Stars. But the one thing I want to tell everybody about Dallas's play this year, because, you know, I'm watching hockey every night, so I see a, these teams I'll play a lot, all of them. So I get a sense of their style of play. I get the sense of the way they want to go about things uh, on a nightly basis. And the one thing I will say about Dallas uh, is that they are really jumping up their defensemen in the rush a lot more often. They're trying to be a five-man attack. It was a lot more conservative with Rick Bonus there. And, of course, Rick Bonus has kind of played that more defensive-minded style and brought that to Winnipeg this year. And when you look now at Dallas and Peter DeBoer, this is definitely a more aggressive offensive team compared to last year. There are, There's no doubt about that whatsoever. Uh, it is a team that is definitely trying to have their defense be a part of the offense at every uh, opportunity they can. So I think that's playing a role in why the Dallas Stars have played some overs this season and especially of late. So I think this is probably a game where rather than a side, I lean Dallas. Dallas at plus 110 is a, a lean for me. I don't know if I'll pull the trigger on that. But I think I will look at the over in this game with the Stars and the Lightning. And it doesn't hurt either. Both teams' power plays are really starting to heat up. Tampa Bay has scored six power play goals uh, in the last six games. Uh, the Dallas Stars have been on fire with the man advantage. Eight power play goals uh, in the last six games for them. Uh, so both teams are doing a good job with the man advantage, which tells you that from a prop standpoint tonight, maybe you'll look at some power play points with both of these teams, considering both of them. Uh, have a power play that is in very good form uh, at the moment. And as far as our goal scorer prop uh, potentials uh, for this game, you know, when you look at Dallas here, um, Matei Blumel continues to be someone that I would target. He finally got his uh, first inning. Well, not finally. It was only a second game, but I didn't bet it. And I'm pissed off I didn't bet it. It's because it was an early game on Sunday and the NFL was going on. And, you know, sometimes things just – fall through the cracks, if you will. And that one was, and I bet blue Mel against San Jose. He didn't score and I didn't do it against Philly. And he did scores first ever NHL goal. And he's playing on that second line for the uh, Dallas stars uh, as well right now. So uh, I think you look at that as a player prop with great value uh, right now uh, for the uh, Dallas stars. He's playing with uh, Sagan uh, on that uh, second line for Dallas, as well as uh, Mason Marchment. So Great opportunity there for Matei Blumel. And again, a situation where he's not being priced like his line mates. And we say that over and over and over again. It's the wonderful thing about trying to capitalize on these. He's plus 495, plus 450, you know, in some spots to score a goal tonight. Plus 575 at Caesars for a guy that scored in the last game and he's on the second line tonight for the uh, Dallas Stars. Incredible uh, value. And three shots on goal, by the way, uh, in this first two games. Um, so a blue Mel tonight is definitely worth a look uh, in this game. Again, plus 575 to score a goal tonight at Caesars. And you have Marchment here at around, well, Marchment's at a good price, actually, too, plus 300. Uh, and um, Tyler Sagan uh, is around that as well, plus 270 to plus 300. But nothing like blue Mel, who's plus 575 on that same line. So that would be someone I would target once again for the uh, Stars here, uh, goal score prop wise tonight. Uh, and other than that, for Tampa Bay, Brandon Hagel is finally getting adjusted. He's been terrific on that top line uh, for the uh, Dallas Stars, uh, for the Tampa Bay Lightning, I should say. Uh, no question about that. Uh, Nick Paul 
uh, on the second line for the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, scored against Washington. Uh, he's actually scored three of the last five games. Nick Paul's an option that I like for a goal prop tonight. And if you want to go down the board a little bit, guy with some talent, guy with some ability, uh, a young kid that's had two, three, four, five shots on goal in the last four games. Yes, he's played down the lineup, but don't be surprised if now that he scored his first NHL goal, uh, maybe he gets a little more responsibility, and that's Cole Kepke uh, for the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. Cole Kepke, who scored his first goal uh, in the NHL uh, over the uh, weekend, and it was a nice one too. So uh, Cole Kepke gets his first uh, NHL goal over the weekend, uh, and you can get him at a really solid price as well, plus 600. There you go. Now that's value. That's the bargain bin right there. So a couple decent options here tonight in terms of uh, goal score player props. Uh, all right, next up, we have Toronto and Pittsburgh. Even money here, both sides, uh, six and a half the total uh, in this game. Uh, the Leafs split the back-to-back uh, -back games at home uh, over the weekend. Uh, they lost to the Pittsburgh Penguins 4-2 on Friday night, the Hall of Fame game. Uh, and then they bounced back on Saturday and after a slow start against Vancouver. 2-0 uh, deficit. They come back and they beat the uh, Canucks 3-2. Tough beat if you had the over like I did in that Vancouver-Toronto game with uh, a scoreless third period, uh, keeping that game uh, under the total. Uh, but as far as this game goes, I think it's actually – I haven't bet Toronto a lot. I, I, I might be looking at uh, Toronto in this game. I like how it sets up for them. They lost to this Pittsburgh team at home last uh, Friday. Revenge spot. These short turnaround revenge spots have been terrific this year. Rangers pummeled Detroit after losing to Detroit a few days back. See a uh, Minnesota beat Seattle after Seattle shut him out in Minnesota. I mean, you're seeing countless examples of these revenge situations coming through in the NHL. And I think you've got that here potentially with Toronto. They got two days off. Now Matt Murray looks like he is going to make his return from injury uh, for the elites tonight facing his old club. That's an angle that always is appealing to me. You know you want to play well against your former team. A lot of history there with uh, Matt Murray. Uh, hasn't played in a while, no question. That's definitely something you want to uh, keep in mind. But at the same time, he was playing okay, you know, before the injury. I don't think uh, his play was subpar. Uh, it was his play great? No. But uh, at the same time, I don't think he had some decent games. Now, the abductor injury is not easy to come back from, uh, you know, so we'll have to see how he – and the groin is a very, very treacherous – part of the body, part of the anatomy to be hurting for a goaltender. We know that. Um, but certainly from a I'm – he should be fired up to be back in the crease and certainly amped up to play his former team, the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. And to be honest with you, I've said this about Toronto uh, in the past. A lot of times that uh, – well, not so much this year. The, the road record hasn't been great, uh, two and five coming into this game. But years past, they've actually been more comfortable and at ease on the road. Where at home, that's when the Leafs kind of stumble a little bit. But – I think I like Toronto a little bit here in this game. Pittsburgh, they did snap the bad losing streak, one two in a row against Washington and Toronto, lost in overtime the other night against Montreal, 5-4. Uh, Casey DeSmith back in net, and I'm not shocked by that. Casey DeSmith played better than um, Tristan Jari. I almost blanked on his name. Uh, Tristan Jari, a 2.67 goals against average, 916 save percentage. Uh, definitely something you want to keep in mind uh, for this game. Uh, yeah, definitely Toronto defensive injuries, no doubt. Uh, someone in the chat mentioning that. it you know, Look, Muzzin's been out for a while. They've had time to adjust to that. TJ Brody's the big one. TJ Brody is you know someone that's pretty steady uh, on the back end for the Leafs. Two weeks out, uh, Brody's injury similar to John Tavares, according to Sheldon Keefe. So they expect probably a two- to three-week absence, and that's unfortunate because, you know, like I said, in terms of steady, solid, you know, positionally sound defensemen, play the position well, you know, are really responsible at that end of the ice, keeping the puck out of the net. Brody's up there as one of the best for Toronto. So all of a sudden now there's some shuffling going on. Riley, Jordy Ben, Jordy Ben actually played well. And I'm not a Jordy Ben fan. I think Jordy Ben's a meandering defenseman, but I give him credit. He came into the lineup against Vancouver Saturday night, played a good game, even scored a goal uh, in that game. Giordano with Hall. I mean, the Leaf fans want Justin Hall sent packing right now. I mean, there's so many Leaf fans that aren't happy with him. And look, he's had a tough season. Uh, no question about that. Um, Rasmus Sandin, uh, Timothy Lilligren uh, on the uh, third pair tonight for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. 
so we'll see how that goes. Pontus Holmberg coming back into the lineup and uh, playing with Engvall and uh, Yarncroke on the third line. Looks like the top two lines. Bunting is going to be back with Matthews and Marner. Uh, Kerfoot slides down to play with Tavares. And, or sorry, they got Bunting with Matthews and Nylander, it looks like tonight. So some shuffling going on. Kerfoot with Tavares and Marner uh, on the uh, second line for the uh, uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs tonight. But yeah, I like uh, Toronto here in this one. I also like the over just because, again, we've got cluster injury situation on the blue line as an over situation for me. And I do think the Leafs are going to have more success offensively against DeSmith. Remember, DeSmith is playing well, but DeSmith is still a guy that's been pretty much labeled a backup goaltender, number two option. And the Leafs now get to face this guy for the second time in less than a week. You've got to believe now there's a better scouting report out there. You've got to believe there's a better idea of where his weaknesses are, where his vulnerabilities are. It wouldn't shock me to see Toronto get three or four at least tonight. I, I'm not buying DeSmith just yet. Not yet, especially now, because look, he's going to have to face a, a team for a second straight time. He hasn't faced the same team during this little run he's put together. He hasn't had to face the same team twice. Now he's going to have to face the same team twice, uh, a team that's now going to have a little bit better idea of where uh, you, you go about trying to beat this guy uh, in terms of finding the back of the net. So uh, I like Toronto minus 110. I like over six and a half as well uh, in this game. And as far as props go, I'd stick to the same for the Leafs. Uh, Kerfoot's had chances. He's probably going to have a shot. Uh, Holmberg's not a bad option on the third line. He's firing the puck a lot from the third line. The other guy, too, I've talked about him. I'm going, going back, back to Cali, Cali, Cali Arncroak. I know the offense hasn't come through for him yet, but uh, definitely uh, someone that has been able to uh, find the uh, back of the net uh, or last week against Carolina and is getting the chances at least. Uh, Pittsburgh, I still say Jason Zucker. One of the red red hot penguins right now, feeling it offensively, undervalued compared to you know Gensel and Crosby and Malkin. Uh, definitely, Jason Zucker is someone to consider from a prop standpoint uh, for the uh, Penguins tonight. And also, when you look at the lineup, uh, Ra Raquel has been uh, chipping in every now and then. Brock McGinn as well is actually a surprise uh, depth forward that has kind of stepped up for the uh, Penguins offensively lately. Three consecutive games with a goal for Brock. McGinn playing on that third line for the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. He's been with Kakalaki most of his career, second year now with the Penguins, but uh, three straight games with a goal for him. So Zucker's a good option. Uh, like I say, Brock McGinn, uh, he's got it cooking right now for Pittsburgh with goals in three consecutive games uh, for the uh, Penguins. And his prop uh, tonight is plus 470 uh, in uh, some spots. That's the penultimate value right there plus 450 to plus 470 so not bad options there when you're talking about uh some of these pittsburgh props zucker and mcginn are probably uh my two favorite uh pittsburgh penguin goal scorer props tonight all right vancouver and buffalo we've got uh, even money here uh, minus 110 both sides six and a half the total in this game this is a pretty damn important game for the buff well for both teams vancouver they've, they've had a bunch of important games because they're just fallen way out of it at this point with uh, the loss is mounting, but this is an important game for Buffalo. Okay. They hit the road for a tough road trip after tonight, starting tomorrow in Ottawa. They need to stop the bleeding. All right. They've lost five in a row. Uh, it's been a tough schedule, Carolina, Tampa Bay, Vegas, Boston. I mean, four excellent teams. So it's been a tough schedule. You'd like to have seen them win one of those games, but it didn't happen. Um, and then you had the bad loss to Arizona, although Arizona has been feisty, spunky, uh, on this road trip. But the bottom line is Buffalo needs an answer. They need to go uh, on uh, this, uh, go out here with the, uh, they need to go on this. Um, I I'm stumbling over my words here. My apologies. They need to end this homestand with a victory. That's what they need. They've got to get one of these games on this homestand right now, uh, the uh, Buffalo Sabres. And I think this is an opportunity for them to get it. Vancouver is just down for the count as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Craig Anderson will be in net for the uh, Sabres. His numbers this year are actually quite good. Three and two, 2.4 goals against, 922 save percentage. Uh, on the flip side, you've got Spencer uh, Martin getting the start. He's actually been the better goalie than uh, Thatcher Demko. That's hard to believe, but it's true. Although his numbers still are not spectacular uh, this year. 3.39 goals against, 902 save percentage. Uh, he's been better than Demko, but still below average numbers here for him. Uh, with the uh, Vancouver Canucks. This is a must-get for Buffalo, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Chris Otto, you can spit out the Vancouver uh, first period over numbers. I know they're incredible. They're off the chart, right? 
uh, Vancouver first period over Vancouver first 10 minutes goal. Cause I saw that in the chart um, there. Like it's unbelievable how insanely uh, productive the record is Vancouver on the first period over. So I wouldn't talk anyone out of that. I'm sure Alex B Smith, even though he's not with me today, is probably on that Canuck Sabres over at first period. I probably like that. I like the, the full game over as well, six and a half. I like Buffalo here. Buffalo's got to get this. It's a bad Vancouver team. They are a sieve defensively. They can't hold a lead worth a shit right now. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks, not worth a shit can the Vancouver Canucks hold a lead uh, at this point in time. So, uh, you know, it's a confidenceless team. Uh, it's a rudderless team uh, right now, especially at the defensive end of the ice. And, and Buffalo's got to pounce on this team. Buffalo's got to. Stop the bleeding, win a game to end this uh, road trip, and I think they got a good chance to do that. They do have a couple injuries. Uh, Ocposo and Quinn uh, up front going to miss this game for Buffalo. Uh, Matias Samuelson, uh, full participant in practice, but not ready to return just yet, uh, uh, according to uh, uh, the coach, uh, Don Granado. So we're still going to wait on Samuelson being back. Uh, Vancouver, uh, they've got some injury concerns. Pearson's on IR. Studnika's been placed on IR for them. Uh, the silly pod Colson got in a scrap the other night with AJ Greer in that game against Boston. Uh, and it's probably because of that fight that he got injured uh, day to day. So we'll have to see if he uh, comes back tonight uh, from uh, that injury that he suffered. But I like Buff. Buffalo's got to get this here. Buffalo's got to win this year. It's, it's important. They don't want to lose every game on this homestand. This is the most vulnerable opponent they've faced. Uh, and it's a cheap price. You're only laying a buck ten here with the uh, Sabers. So Buffalo, first period over, full game over. I think they're all good looks tonight, as far as this game is concerned. Uh, as far as the prop market goes, uh, Peyton Krebs is getting elevated to the second line tonight with Middlestat and o Olafson uh, for Buffalo, Tuck Thompson and Skinner for the uh, Buffalo Sabers on the uh, top line. Paterka shifting down to the third line with Cousins and Giergensen. I think a sign that maybe he's uh, hit a little bit of a rough patch offensively, Paterka, even though he had that blistering start. Peyton Krebs is a capable offensive player, has the potential to be. It just hasn't gone well for him. You know, he's been a healthy scratch a couple of times. He's been dropped to the fourth line. He's, his power play opportunities have been diminished. I mean, it's the lack of offense has definitely been disappointing from Krebs, just two points on the season. Both of them assists, but bumped up to the second line. Opportunity knocks. I thought he was more, way more around the front of the net, buzzing for scoring chances on Saturday night in that 3-1 loss against Boston. So I think Peyton Krebs is a great undervalued prop option for Buffalo. Getting the bump up the lineup to the second line, see if he ends up taking advantage of that. He is plus 500 in some spots to score a goal, plus 550 at Caesars, man, that Caesar Sportsbook, man, with some of these, the, they're, they're the props prices on some of these guys seem to be better there than in a lot of spots. So make sure you're shopping around with any goal scorer player prop that you are looking at. But that definitely is what I would look at from the Buffalo side of things. Vancouver uh, goal props uh, tonight. Uh, Mikheyev is starting to get it going for the Canucks. Uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Of course, Kuzmenko has been, uh, Kuzmenko, it looks like may not play tonight. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's weird because he did not play uh, against Boston. It's not an injury. It's actually a healthy scratch. How do you healthy? Like uh, Bruce, I mean, I it must not be happy with his defensive play or play away from the puck. That's what I got to assume it is. But Kuzmenko, um, seven goals and you're taking that out of your lineup, but it doesn't look like he's going to be in the lineup as of right now, based on morning skate, uh, this morning for the, uh, Vancouver Canucks. So that's something you want to uh, keep in mind. Uh, maybe you look at this guy too, that's now playing for the uh, Vancouver Canucks. He's been scored. He's on the third line. It looks like with uh, uh, the third line center spot, uh, Sheldon Drees here for them. Uh, he scored in the last game for Vancouver. So definitely maybe something you want to consider as well for a player prop tonight in that game. All right, let's move on. New Jersey, Montreal. We've got New Jersey minus 190 uh, road favorites, six and a half the total. Uh, in this game, money pouring in on the Devils, and you know they just keep winning. Uh, they just keep finding a way to win, and they're finding ways to win when they don't even play their best. I don't think they played their best against Ottawa, but won the game. I don't think they played their best against Arizona, but won the game. I mean, that is what they are doing right now, uh, the New Jersey Devils. But man, I'm tempted by Montreal. All this team does is compete. If they've won three in a row, all as underdogs against Detroit, Vancouver, and then in, against Pittsburgh. They come back and win in overtime. 
uh, in that game. Very tempted to take the home dog here, Montreal, but at the same point in time, I mean, New Jersey just keeps on finding ways to win. They're just absolutely dynamic offensively at this point in time. This is another over probably for me in this game, six and a half. Montreal can score goals. So can New Jersey and series history, five and one to the over the last six meetings between the Devils and the Canadians, four, three, six, four, five, four, seven, one, seven, four, where the final scores uh, of those five games that went over the total only one game in the last six meetings stayed under. And that was in New Jersey last year, three, two final score in that game. But, um, you know, to be honest with you, uh, definitely uh, an overlook for me. And I'm honestly tempted by Montreal, but I don't know if I want to tempt fade again, trying to fade uh, New Jersey. I faded them against uh, Arizona, I bet against them just because the price was just incredible uh, with Arizona there. And they still found a way. Again, not their best game, but they won. They found a way to win. That's what they've been doing lately. Uh, this New Jersey Devils team, uh, it's been an incredible win streak. You know, they're going to lose at some point, but. You know, right now what they're doing is pretty damn impressive. And you know what's uh, hilarious is that uh, early in the season, I've mentioned this before, they fired the fire Lindy chance in the second and the first home game of the season uh, against Detroit. And they after, on the heels of losing to Philadelphia in their first game, uh, 0-2 start. And uh, sorry, Lindy, uh, were the chance uh, at Prudential Center uh, in New Jersey uh, after uh, when at the end of that Arizona game when they were winning four to two. So sorry, Lindy and uh, Lindy Ruff, uh, he, he was pretty good about it. He knows it's a business. He knows the fan base is fickle. He knows the fan base, you know, they want your, they want your head one minute and they want to hug you the next minute. Uh, he said, I accept the apology and maybe one day we can all sit down and have a beer and laugh about it. So there you go. Good attitude right there. And yeah, things are all of a sudden going very well uh, right now for Lindy Ruff. Will they go well tonight? I badly, you know, want to, Want to take this price on Montreal, but uh, it, it's tough. Vitek Banachek and Jake Allen, by the way, uh, are going to be your goaltenders tonight in this game. You know what's been incredible, too, about New Jersey's run? They're 12-3 and three now, and this incredible nine-game win streak. They've done it without Andre Pilat. You know, one of their impactful marquee free agent signings uh, in the offseason. Stanley Cup champion, great player uh, at both ends of the ice. And they have somehow continued uh, to win games uh, without one of their key players. I mean, most important forwards, if you ask me. So really speaks volumes about uh, the way the New Jersey Devils are certainly playing right now. you got to give them all the credit in the world for it. I mean, goal score props, where do you start? I keep saying that if you want the value, you go to the fourth liners because they've honestly stepped up and scored for this team. It's hard to believe it. Bastion's been an impact player. Miles Wood has scored four goals in the last five games for New Jersey, and he gets fourth line minutes. Um, it's been impressive. Fabian Zetterlin, I've talked about him repeatedly. Uh, top line, getting opportunities, worth a look. Um, I know he, Shear, Hughes, and Bratt uh, are the main three, but there's other ones I would look at with greater value for goal scores for uh, Montreal. Kirby Doc, I've mentioned this over and over for Montreal. Nick Suzuki as well. Mike Hoffman starting to heat up for the uh, Canadians. That might be worth a look. I've been on the Hoffman prop a few games in a row, and he scored four goals in the last three games for Montreal. Uh, Hoffman, uh, Suzuki, Doc, very good options for Montreal in terms of uh, goal score props uh, in this game. Josh Anderson even is a consideration. He's streaky, and he finally got off the schneid uh, against Pittsburgh the other night. So nice little game to sprinkle around the board, uh, pepper the board, spread the wealth, share the wealth, if you will. Uh, and go with a bunch of different options here in terms of uh, player props tonight. All right, next up, we've got Philadelphia and Columbus. Uh, we've got Columbus, uh, sorry, Philly, about minus 115 road favorites, six the total. The, the line has shifted big time uh, in this game. Columbus opened a minus 135 home favorite, and now the Flyers are favored in this game against Columbus. And I think it's moved for a damn good reason. This is a beaten up to shit Columbus team right now. No question about it. They are brutalized right now with injuries, especially on the blue line, which is never a good sign. You're talking about Zach Wierenski, one of your best defensemen out possibly for the season on IR. Nick Blankenberg, this kid out of Michigan, is going to be a good player. He's now on IR. Adam Boquist uh, is on IR for this team. Then on, up front, you got Voracek on IR, Danforth on IR, and now it's just been announced that Patrick Lyonet will miss three to four weeks with a sprained ankle. So 
big time problems right now for uh, Columbus. Shorthanded, ravaged hockey team, uh, not good at all uh, whatsoever uh, for them. And here we go again with this short term revenge spot. Columbus beat Philadelphia five to two last week. Philadelphia looking to return the favor tonight. Philadelphia off three straight losses uh, against uh, that Columbus game that I mentioned. Ottawa, they lost 4-1. I thought they played well. They had chances. They had opportunities. But it was a really good game in net from Cam Talbot uh, in that game for, for the Ottawa Senators. He played well. And then, of course, back-to-back against Dallas. Dallas is just a better hockey team. Dallas was off a loss to San Jose uh, on the Friday night. And Philadelphia was in a tough situation there, and uh, they ended up getting the uh, victory in that game. What did the uh, Dallas Stars? I think there's a good spot for Philly. Uh, I, I actually jumped on the price when it was uh, better than it is right now. What number did I get? I got minus 105 uh, on Philadelphia, so a little bit better than what's out there right now. But I would still take them at minus 115. I like the Flyers here uh, in uh, this game. Uh, with t- Carter Hart in net for Philadelphia. Uh, he has been really strong this year, 6-2. and two. 2.18 goals against average, 9.37 save percentage. And then on the flip side, you've got Elvis. Uh, he's back in the building tonight for the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. He's in a four-game losing streak. He's been absolutely dreadful during that stretch. 5.74 goals against average. Uh, overall on the season, 2-5, and five, uh, 4.81 goals against average, 8.63 save percentage uh, for Elvis Merzlikin. So it has been a rough go, rough go. Uh, without a doubt for uh, for him in net. And look, we've talked about this, and you know you don't want to always equate the uh, personal side of things to struggles, but I, I'm just looking at the numbers right now. Elvis Merzlikens, that first of all, Thatcher Demko is dead last. Dead last. 73 registered goaltenders that have made an appearance for an NHL team this year. 73 goaltenders. Thatcher Demko is dead last, 73rd in terms of goals saved above average, minus 10.94. So that tells you how bad Demko's been. I mean, that's uh, he's dead last in the NHL in goals saved above average, the advanced metric statistic uh, for goaltenders. Do you know who's second last? Elvis Merzlikens. Elvis Merzlikens, 10.44 to the negative, goals saved above average. Uh, so that tells you how much... Um, how much it's been a tough go of it for Merzlikens. Now, I think part of it is just, look, his his form is not there. He's struggling. He's fighting the puck. He's letting in soft goals. And part of it's the mental side of things. He has been shaken up. I have no doubt about that with the tragic death with the fireworks accident of Matisse Kevlenix, uh, his Latvian country mate. There is no doubt that has gotten to him. Man, and why, why the, how the fuck could it not? I mean, that was probably one of his best friends. It's just an absolute tragedy. It's shocking. It's stunning because it's just, it's so sudden. You don't expect this kind of shit to ever happen. And I just don't think he's been, uh, he's been shaken up by it off the, I think off the ice, he's, yeah, that's hit him hard, that whole incident. Cause he was right there, you know, when it happened. Uh, and you got to wonder if, you know, he's, he's in the right frame of mind, the right headspace right now. And you have to be in good headspace to be an effective, strong, uh, NHL goaltender, you know, you have to be in a position where you 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 put you clout you you put all the distractions aside, and you focus on stopping the freaking puck. All right, that is what you have to be uh, right now for uh, a goaltender to succeed. I think in the NHL, especially when you consider the fact that you're facing you know the best of the best, best players, best shooters, best forwards, best offensive talent uh, in the world when it comes to hockey, and uh, definitely. Um, it has been a struggle uh, for Elvis uh, Berzlikens, no question about that. So he's had some time off, you know, to you know work on his game, get his mind right. Uh, maybe that's a benefit to him tonight. But it's one of those situations where I got to see it before I believe it, right? I mean, we've seen nothing but bad stuff from Columbus defensively all year, and from Elvis in particular in net. And we have to see evidence of him playing better before we're ready to back him or trust him. So I am going to look at Philadelphia here, minus 115 uh, in this game. Nothing on the total uh, in this one. I mean, Philly's an under team, but Columbus is an over team. I mean, so it's tough to, I'll t- I will say this though. The last meeting did go over the total five to uh, Columbus, but if Philadelphia has their way, which they might, you would think this might be their preferred style of play, tight checking, 
good defensively, lower scoring. That's the way Tortorella wants them to play. That's the way they have to play uh, to be successful. So uh, because I like Philly, I'd probably lean under, but scared to death to bet a Columbus game over the to- uh, under the total right now. They've just been such uh, an over machine and such a bad defensive team. I mean, giving up four to the Islanders, five, six to Colorado, seven to New Jersey, four to Boston, six to Arizona. I mean, it's endless, the number of bad defensive games uh, that they have had. Uh, all right, next up, Minnesota and Nashville uh, in Music City. Uh, we've got minus 110, even money, both sides uh, in this game. Uh, the total currently at uh, six, uh, shaded to the under. Uh, cert- certainly, I understand why there's trepidation to bet over with Minnesota right now. They have suddenly kind of become an under machine. They've, their offense has been sputtering defensively, and the goaltending has been uh, pretty decent during this run. And Minnesota's on a little bit of an under streak uh, right now, big time under streak, nine and one to the under type of streak. Uh, for the uh, Minnesota Wild in their last 10 games, including six straight unders for Minnesota uh, coming into this game tonight against uh, Nashville. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Um, oh, yeah, I, I skipped player props on the Philly-Columbus game. I would look at Cates. I would look at Tippett for Philly. I think they're the undervalued commodities. Faraby also might be worth a look for them. Columbus, the only one I would consider, uh, is Emil Bemstrom. Uh, potentially uh, in this uh, game because he's moving up to the top line, getting opportunity with Johnny Gaudreau and Boone Jenner. He's taken the Patrick Lyon a spot uh, on that top line. And Benstrom scored two points, a goal and an assist against the Islanders. So Emil Bemstrom for the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets, top line tonight with uh, Jenner and Gaudreau. So uh, definitely I think that's the value uh, right there. Uh, uh, Kent Johnson's back in the lineup. I know he's going to play on the third line tonight or actually returned against uh, the Islanders on Saturday, but uh, I think there's value uh, with his prop. Uh, no, he didn't play against the Islanders. He's playing tonight uh, in this one. So uh, return to the lineup for Kent Johnson. So those are your props uh, I would uh, look at here uh, in terms of uh, value for uh, Columbus, even though I don't know if they're going to score a ton of goals against Hart, who's been absolutely terrific. Sillinger scored against uh, Columbus. Maybe he gets it going because they were going to count on him offensively. So if you want to add something to Bemstrom, uh, for Columbus, then maybe I would consider um, Cole Sillinger as well. Sillinger, by the way, is plus 320 to score a goal. Bemstrom, plus 330 uh, in some spots. And again, he's getting the Patrick Lyon eight spot tonight uh, on that uh, top line. So anyway, back to Minnesota, Nashville now. Yeah, I like Minnesota here a little bit. I mean, uh, uh, Nashville is one of those teams that I know they beat the Rangers the other night, but again, they got Halak. They did not get Shesterkin. Uh, in net. They're still not playing great. Uh, They got badly outplayed as well by the New York Rangers. Uh, 35-18 shots on goal uh, in favor of uh, the Rangers uh, in that game. Uh, It was a good night for Soros, and uh, you got to give him credit. And that's the that's the Jekyll and Hyde nature of Nashville right now. You just don't know when uh, Soros is going to play well. Uh, When he does, he's capable of just being an excellent goaltender, but you just don't always get that from him night in uh, and night out. Uh, when you look at this uh, series history, uh, actually, when you look at it in Nashville, Minnesota won in Nashville last year, 5-4 in overtime. Nashville won, uh, in, uh, or Minnesota, or Nashville won in Minnesota, 6-2. So the road team did well last year between these two teams. Minnesota's road record, like I said, 5-3. and three. They've actually played some solid hockey away from home. They've really tightened things up defensively on the road. They shut out Seattle. They shut out Anaheim, or they held Anaheim to one goal. Uh, in that on that road trip, they lost LA, but they held the Kings to one goal. Uh, they just couldn't find a way to uh, uh, back, uh, get to the uh, front of the net here, uh, or, or find the back of the net, I should say. But I like Minnesota here at even money, uh, minus one ten. I gotta believe they are not happy with blowing that game against San Jose three uh, two. And I was happy. I loved it. I loved every second of it as I had the uh, Sharks there uh, in that game uh, at a big plus price uh, and they ended up coming back and winning in a shootout by a score of 3-2 in that game. But I think a nice bounce back bet on spot for Minnesota uh, here in Nashville uh, to bounce back from the setback against uh, San Jose against a still highly inconsistent, erratic Nashville team. So I like Minnesota minus 110 and our Minnesota Wild resident fan, Terry Edelman. Yeah, I mean, Marco Rossi, second line. I get it. Yeah, I know he's been – he hasn't scored a goal yet this year, by the way, Marco Rossi. So it's kind of a leap of faith, you know, to take him to score a goal tonight uh, in this game. But he is on the second-line center spot. 
That's number one with Felino and Boldy. I mean, an opportunity exists there for him. So it's definitely something to consider as far as a goal score prop goes. Uh, looks like Beckman, uh, someone else we've talked about uh, with some offensive upsides, got the opportunity to score goals. I like this Connor DeWar, honestly, for uh, uh, Minnesota Wild uh, right now as a goal prop tonight. Six shots on goal in the last three games combined. Two points in the last three games combined. I scored a goal against San Jose uh, on uh, Sunday night. So uh, definitely, I think Connor Dewar uh, for Minnesota is someone to consider as well tonight uh, in this uh, game. Uh, plus 650, uh, says Terry on the uh, prop on Rossi uh, at Bet365. So I think, yeah, I don't mind. At that price, I'm definitely interested. But, you know, we're, we are still talking about a guy that's gone a goose egg this year in terms of goal scoring. So, He's got to overcome that, but uh, definitely are getting a good price. And like I said, Connor DeWar is probably uh, an option to consider as well. But don't go crazy in this game because I don't know if we'll see a ton of goals. Minnesota's really, really playing this you know, low-scoring style of hockey right now uh, the last few games. But there are a couple that stand out on the Minnesota side. All right, next up, San Jose, Vegas. Uh, Vegas minus 290. Uh, minus 270 in some spots, as high as minus 290 home favorites in others. Six, six and a half the total uh, in this game. I like the over here uh, for sure in this game. Uh, shop around. I think there are some sixes out there because I did bet it when it was six uh, earlier in the day. It looks like, yeah, there's six at DraftKings. There's six at Pinnacle. Multiple books have the total at six in this game as opposed to six and a half. And, uh, you know, I've been riding San Jose over the total seven, two and one uh, to the over in their last 10 games, the San Jose Sharks. And when you look at the way they've played, it's not surprising to see it. They, their offense has been capable. You know, they beat Minnesota three, two offense came to life, uh, beat Dallas five, four uh, on Friday. They've actually won two in a row. Uh, and then, of course, this, the before that San Jose against St. Louis, they scored three, four against uh, Anaheim, three against uh, Florida five against Anaheim, three against Tampa, uh, four against Toronto. Um, so this team, the San Jose Sharks, that is, they have scored three-plus goals um, in eight straight games coming into the, to, into tonight against the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, so, you know, it actually has me thinking, you know what, does San Jose get over two and a half? <laughs> uh, I, kind of, I kind of like that over two and a half team total on San Jose, but I like Vegas for the game. It's kind of a conflict. But I think it's also a game where I think Vegas is going to – they're going to open up a little bit tonight because they're off a loss, 3-2, out of the St. Louis Blues on Saturday night, uh, a game where their offense got shut down a little bit. It was a good defensive effort in the third period uh, by the St. Louis Blues in that game. Uh, I could see Vegas kind of opening things up offensively. Keep in mind, they lost to Calgary early in the year. They exploded for five goals the next game. Uh, so we've got at least one piece of evidence off a loss where – team really does try to look to get rolling on the offensive end of things uh so it's kind of weird where i like the vegas side a little bit in this game um the regulation price isn't good this is one of those games where if you like vegas you're gonna have to go first period puck line which might be a decent option actually uh first period puck line here for vegas because i also remember you know the calgary game then they beat winnipeg and they jumped on winnipeg after the calgary loss they came home they played winnipeg they jumped on winnipeg in the first period so that first period puck line minus a half plus 120 uh, might be worth a look here on the vegas golden knights tonight get off to a good start uh get out to a lead early uh the regulation price is probably not good enough for me uh, in order to uh, bet it here uh, in this game uh, Vegas and regulation is still minus one, like minus one fifty nine, minus one sixty. That at Pinnacle is the best price you can get with Vegas and regulation right now. Not sure I'm in a rush to do that. What you can do is if you have Pinnacle, if you have certain books that give you this option, you could also do Vegas uh, combo bet, Vegas money line, and you know over five and a half, over six and a half, or you could do under you know, six and a half or under seven and a half if you really want to. And I find with these combo bets, if you're going to put the under in a combo bet with the money line, do a six and a half, do a seven and a half. Don't do a five. It's too too risky these days with how many goals are scored uh, in the National Hockey League uh, to not make that under a six and a half, to make that under a five and a half uh, as opposed to six and a half, seven and a half if you're going to combo it up with a money line. Uh, so keep that uh, in mind. But uh, you could also go with um, Vegas minus one. Even that's minus 174, so you're not even getting great value with that. So 
I, I want to get after Vegas here and, and back them. And you're right, the, the track record against uh, – and people in the chat are uh, – Onto it, it's true. They've dominated San Jose, completely dominated them. They're off a loss. It's a great bounce back spot for what we still know is a very good hockey team. I mean, the three-two loss doesn't dispel the fact this has still been a team that's been very strong here in the early going. Uh, Thirteen and three uh, at San Jose team they've dominated. So I definitely am going to be on that first period puck line because I think that's the best option, best value uh, for Vegas here, especially when you saw the one of the previous times they were off a loss this year. They bounced back the next game against Winnipeg, and I think they were up like 4 nothing or something after the first period. So that Vegas minus a half, plus 120 first period, uh, I think is a very good look. Yet I'm still tempted by that San Jose team total over over 2.5 at like even money is what it is. And they've scored three or more goals in eight straight games. But does San Jose get shut down completely But by a Vegas team that we know when they're on their best, uh, when they bring their best game defensively, they can shut you down. So that would be the one concern. But, man, just it's screaming at me. San Jose team total over two and a half. Got to bet it. They've scored three in a row, three goals in eight straight games, uh, this San Jose team. I still might sprinkle on that when it's all said and done. And I do like over six, minus 118 as well here at uh, Pinnacle uh, with this game over the total. So Vegas first period puck line. I am probably going to end up on San Jose team total over two and a half at plus 100. And I'm going to be on over six. I'm all over the map. I'm all over the map with this game. And this doesn't happen often. Usually, I, if I like something, I stick to one side. I don't try to bet a money line or a puck line on one team and a team total over on the other team. I don't normally do that. Uh, but I might make an exception here uh, with this uh, San Jose Vegas game. Uh, as far as goaltending goes uh, for this game, it has been confirmed James Reimer and Logan Thompson uh, are going to be uh, your goaltenders. And Thompson, you know, not only. Um, uh, Thompson's in the call to trophy race. There's no question for rookie of the year, 2.32 goals against 925, uh, save percentage. He has six and oh, in his last six starts. Uh, and, uh, he has been a little bit more, not, I don't want to say shaky, but he's been not nearly as good. The last three starts, he's given up 11 goals, uh, combined in the last three starts, but he still overall had a terrific season in net for the, uh, Vegas golden Knights, Logan Thompson, uh, in net. So, yeah, I'm, it's, it's a weird way of approaching this game, but sometimes it, the prices call for it. And the yeah, the, the prices you get on these bets call for a, a unique approach to betting a single game. And for me, Vegas first period puck line, minus half, plus 120. I like that. I can't pass up the value with San Jose team total over two and a half, plus 100. A team that scored three or more goals in eight straight games. And I also think this game finds its way over the total six here. Uh, as well with the uh, Sharks and the Golden Knights. Uh, player prop-wise uh, for this game for Vegas, you stick, I think, to the guys that have been really getting it done lately. Uh, Eichel, obviously, but you don't get the value as much with him. But keep an eye on Brett Houghton. Keep an eye on Nicholas Waugh. These are guys that are uh, the bargain bin guys that have been chipping in offensively lately for uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, two goals in the last four games for Nick Waugh. Uh, Riley Smith, it goes without saying, uh, he is just uh, rocking right now for the Golden Knights. How about six goals in the last five games uh, for Riley Smith? He's been terrific. Uh, those are some options for San Jose. You notice Eric Carlson has suddenly cooled off. We capitalized a couple times. He had that little goal scoring binge, and now he's gone uh, four straight games without scoring. But I wouldn't talk anyone out of taking a shot once again with him finding the back of the net. He's still shooting the puck a shit ton. Look at these last several games for Carlson with the uh, shots on goal numbers. Seven, five, five, six, seven, five, one, two. Uh, I mean, he's still shooting the puck quite a bit, and you got to think it's going to find the back of the net for him uh, at some point. Hurdle, Meyer, and Couture are obviously their uh, guys that are carrying this team offensively. Uh, make no mistake about it uh, for San Jose. So, uh, again, you, there's never a bad uh, – I. Uh, it's never a bad idea to sprinkle on those two guys. Kevin LeBanc, I've mentioned him moving up to the top line. He's getting chances. Uh, it hasn't scored the last three games, but I think that's probably an option you could consider for San Jose. Keep an eye on this Alexander Barabanov as well. Scored against Dallas. Three shots on goal in the last game. Three shots on goal against St. Louis. He's shooting the puck. He's getting opportunities. He's on the second line. So a little Alex Barabanov for San Jose might be a prop to a consider as well. Great value. Second line, getting shots, getting chances for the Sharks. All right, final game. 
uh, of this uh, card. It is not Carolina, Colorado. That's a mistake. Uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, we will change the marquee. Make sure we get it right. It's Detroit and Anaheim. Uh, the last game on this uh, slate, Detroit minus 115 uh, road favorites. Uh, the total right now, six and a half uh, in this game, pretty much across the board. Uh, it's the same old shit right now for the uh, Anaheim Ducks. Uh, I don't know what else there is to say. Just uh, very disappointing as someone that liked their over point total before the season. And uh, it's just not been a very good hockey team. Uh, defensively, they've been porous. Uh, we know that. Um, uh, now 4-10, and 4-11, and 11, I should say, on the season. Just 2-4 and four at the Duck Pond here at the Honda Center. Uh, not playing good hockey. Uh, they have lost three in a row, 3-7 and seven in their last 10 games. Uh, they've lost every game on this homestand so far. And this is the last game of this four-game homestand. So definitely you would think there's a sense of urgency right now for the Ducks. But again, defensive play has been atrocious. Three goals to Chicago, four to Minnesota, five to Florida, four to San Jose, eight to Vancouver, five to San Jose. Uh, they did beat Toronto in overtime and, and held them to three, which is actually the high watermark pretty much for Anaheim's defense these days. Four goals to Vegas, four goals to Tampa. They lost 5-1 to Detroit, the team they're playing tonight. 5-1 uh, they lost in Detroit back on October 23rd. So, you know, it's definitely been a lot of problems. Uh, for uh, Detroit, uh, for Anaheim, keeping the puck out. Uh, no goalies confirmed yet, but projected to be Billy Husso for Detroit and uh, John Gibson for Anaheim. Uh, we will see if that ends up being the case. Um, you know, the, what I probably I haven't bet anything yet on this game. I might pass on it. We'll see. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely interested in a Detroit team total over. That's the way I approached it on Saturday with Chicago uh, against Anaheim. I took Chicago over two and a half team total. I just thought two and a half, really? Now, there, it, look, it was minus 160. I can't say it was great value, but I said still, two and a half, an opponent team total against this Anaheim team right now? How do you not bet that in some form? And sure enough, Chicago scored three. The bare minimum that they needed uh, to cash that uh, team total on Saturday night, uh, but they still ended up going over that team total, which was a good to see. I got to believe Detroit can at least get to uh, three goals in this game. Uh, against this Anaheim team. And if you look at BetMG, and what I like about BetMGM here uh, is that with the team total options there, you can bet half goal increments. And we've talked about this repeatedly here on the show. Uh, Detroit, instead of the three and a half at plus money, you can be a little bit, you know, a little more security. You can take a Detroit team total over three, minus 135 at BetMGM. Um, so I think that is definitely a, a good option. Yeah, there you go, MDR24. That's exactly what I was eyeing in this game. Uh, Detroit team total over three. Uh, for an Anaheim team that, when is the last time they held someone to below three? I can't even remember when. That's how bad it's been to keep the puck out of the net. It's one of the worst penalty kill units I've seen in a very long time as well. Uh, this Anaheim power pa penalty kill is just brutal. I mean, they've actually shut out Chicago's power play on Saturday night uh, in that game, but prior to that, Two power play goals for Minnesota against Anaheim. Two power play goals for Florida against Anaheim. One for San Jose against Anaheim. Two for Vancouver against Anaheim. One for San Jose against Anaheim. One for Toronto against Anaheim. One for Vegas against Anaheim. One for Tampa against Anaheim. Three for Detroit with the man advantage uh, against Anaheim uh, when they played in uh, the Motor City uh, last month. So just an awful penalty kill. And uh, that could be trouble here uh, against uh, Detroit because – you actually look at Detroit, the power play for them has been pretty solid uh, all season long, particularly of late. They have scored five power play goals in the last six games, have the uh, Detroit Red Wings. So that is another concern uh, if you're Anaheim tonight. Your penalty kill just is flat out pathetic. And uh, Detroit is actually clicking uh, in the last uh, few games with uh, the power play. So I like Detroit team total over three. I I'm, I'm pretty damn sure that's going to end up being a bet for me for this game. As far as the uh, player props go, uh, in this one for Detroit. Uh, we do have some lineup changes here, it looks like. Uh, keep in mind, we've got uh, Bertuzzi, uh, Tyler Bertuzzi. We haven't seen him for a while, uh, but he is finally going to return to the lineup and make his season debut. Uh, not season debut. He played early in the year, but hasn't played since October 15th. Uh, and he's going to be back on the uh, top line, reunited with Dylan Larkin and Lucas Raymond, which a lot of people believed was going to be um, the top line combination for uh, Detroit coming into the uh, season. So Tyler Bertuzzi uh, back in the lineup tonight for Derek Lalonde and this Detroit Red Wings team. 
And uh, I'm just looking to see what Tyler's prop is tonight to score a goal. Yeah, and again, he's being priced the way he should. You're not getting great value, plus 220, plus 230. I, I still wouldn't mind a sprinkle on him just because uh, you look at it here, uh, taking a, uh, that price is that, you know, guy getting back into the lineup, he's fired up. You're fa facing a team that has been porous defensively all year. So it's a good matchup. He's going to get on the power play, and we just talked about other Detroit power plays is doing a nice job and how the Anaheim penalty kill is downright lousy. Uh, so it definitely, it sets up as a spot where Pertuzzi might be able to find the back of the net in his very first game back in the lineup here tonight for the uh, Detroit Red Wings uh, in this game. Uh, there's also some other lineup shuffling going on with the Detroit. Uh, Kubalik is worth a look. Uh, Oscar Sunquist juices. Uh, Oscar Sunquist is moving up to the second line tonight. That could be something to consider as well for a value option. Uh, getting a top six roll tonight, plus 550, Oscar Sundquist, uh, in order to score a goal tonight. So keep that in mind, uh, worth a look potentially from a goal score prop standpoint uh, for the uh, Detroit Red Wings tonight. Uh, you got uh, Joe Valeno, by the way, on the uh, third line as someone that we've been waiting for him to get a little offensive mojo going. And he did score against the Rangers a couple games ago, uh, held off the score sheet against L.A., uh, Someone that you could maybe throw just a couple of bucks on. And uh, by the way, we've got uh, Jonathan uh, Bergeron, who is now going to be playing his third consecutive game uh, in uh, the NHL here. Uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, a guy that's been called up recently. Uh, he's on the uh, third line here. He had three shots on goal against the Kings. Hasn't dented the twine yet. Hasn't found the back of the net yet. But again, three shots on goal for him in that last game. He's getting opportunities. So Jonathan Bergeron for the uh, Detroit Red Wings might be worth a look. And of course, Zadina, Soderblom, Vrana, Fabry, and Luff uh, are still out of the lineup for them. Anaheim, if I was going to look at someone in terms of goal scoring here, uh, Adam Henrique is always valued top line, streaky score, but he's been really good. I mean, he's been leading by example. This veteran has stepped up for them. Uh, he scored five goals uh, in the last five games for the uh, Anaheim Ducks. Uh, and you get better prices with him than, say, Terry and Zegris and some of the other forwards on the Anaheim Ducks so uh, keep that in mind Adam Henrique might be worth a look here at plus 240 uh, in uh, some spots and uh, one that might really have value here is Pavel uh, Regenda here for the uh, Anaheim Ducks scored against Minnesota uh, when he entered the lineup uh, last week uh, against the uh, Wild uh, and had five shots on goal five against the uh, Chicago Blackhawks didn't find the back of the net but man you can't say the guy didn't have chances Five shots on goal for Pavel Regenda there for the uh, Anaheim Ducks, and he is plus 500 to plus 575 to score a goal uh, in some books this year. Uh, so um, definitely uh, worth, a, worth a look, in my opinion, when you see that. And on the second line, by the way, with uh, Ryan Strom and Frank Vetrano, the two guys they got in the offseason from the New York Rangers. So some good prop looks. And I like the Detroit team total over three uh, in this game, Ducks and the Red Wings. All right, that is the Tuesday card. Great show, packed with analysis. It's nice. The so, Like I say, I love, I love. well, obviously Alex is a friend. I enjoy doing the shows with him. It's great. I miss him when he's not here. It's The show's better with Alex, but I enjoy doing the odd solo show. You can, you know, go through things uh, more in depth, really speak your mind on every game on the card. And man, I, I certainly did my best to do that uh, here in the last hour. So uh, hit the like button, 168, 170 live viewers on YouTube. Hit the like button. Make sure you do that. Uh, appreciate it very much. And make sure you check out patreon.com slash ice guys. Uh, $10 a month. It's worth it. Tons of great bonus content as well. Uh, you know, the daily ice guys show card is up there. Uh, we've got, you know, goalie charts, totals charts. Uh, more uh, power ratings. I'm finally going to get around to updating the power ratings today. I've, I've missed it last week. It's been busy as hell, but I've updated them. I just haven't posted them yet. We'll finally do that today. Patreon.com slash ice guys, $10 a month. Make sure you sign up for that. All right. Best bet to wrap up this edition of the uh, Tuesday card, a uh, hard act to follow uh, when we had St. Louis plus 170 last night against Colorado as the best bet, but we will try and get another best bet winner. I'm going to rock with the Philadelphia Flyers tonight. Uh, minus 114, uh, actually minus 112 is the best price out there right now. Philadelphia, minus 112 against Columbus. Revenge situation. Teams lost three in a row, but 
they played good enough hockey in a lot of these games. Even the Dallas game, it was turnovers that hurt them. Penalty kill hurt them. Uh, and Dallas was in a good bounce back spot. Uh, now you're facing a struggling Columbus team. Elvis Merzlikens has no confidence in net. The defense is bad for Columbus. Uh, they're riddled with injuries, especially on the blue line. And, of course, some key forwards out. Voracek, Danforth, Lion A. I mean, it's just a really good spot here to back Philly off a few losses in a row. I expect their best effort tonight, and it should be good enough to face, uh, to beat, I should say, a depleted Columbus team. Philadelphia, minus 112 against Columbus. Philly won't be best bet material on this show for me very often, but I think tonight they are worth it. Uh, Philadelphia, minus 112 against Columbus for my best bet for this Tuesday uh, NHL card. That'll wrap things up. Thanks to everyone for joining us. Hit the like button on the way out. A reminder, the Ice Guys is live seven days a week, Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, Saturday and Sunday, noon Eastern. If you can't watch the show live, download the Ice Guys podcast in audio form on all major podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and more. Download the Ice Guys podcast when you can't watch the show live. I'm Ian Cameron. Have a great Tuesday night. Enjoy the games and good luck. We'll talk to you again tomorrow on Wednesday for another edition of the Ice Guys presented by National Hockey Now. 